In this presentation, we are going to discuss metabolic surgery for the management of obesity. This presentation will cover the definition and causes of severe obesity, current medical and surgical treatment approaches and outcomes, and overview of surgical options. Obesity is defined by body mass index. Class 2 obesity is a BMI between 35 to 39.9 and morbid obesity is a BMI greater than 40. Genetics, environment, food industry, lack of physical activity, and stress cause obesity. Obesity can lead to comorbidities such as type 2 diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, heart disease, fatty liver disease, stroke, asthma, osteoarthritis, cancer, and depression. Obesity can also lead to gout, urinary incontinence, infertility and sexual dysfunction in women, sexual dysfunction in men, venous stasis, asthma, and early death. Treatment for obesity include comprehensive lifestyle program, behavior modification, dietary therapy, exercise, drug therapy, and bariatric surgery. Comprehensive lifestyle intervention along or with adjunctive therapies are indicated for patients with a BMI greater than 30 or a BMI greater than 27 with comorbidity. However, with a BMI greater than 40 or a BMI between 35 to 39.9 with comorbidity, patients should consult an experienced bariatric surgeon. Bariatric surgery is recommended for type 2 diabetes patients with a BMI greater than 40 or a BMI between 35 to 39.9 with poorly controlled blood sugar. Bariatric surgery should be considered for type 2 diabetes patients with a BMI between 35 to 39.9 with well-controlled blood sugar. Almost all the clinical trials showed that most obese patients cannot keep the lost weight in the long term. The data from Diabetes Prevention Program trial showed minimal weight loss in the lifestyle intervention group compared with the control group after 10 years. The purple line is the weight for intensive lifestyle intervention patients, and the green line is the weight for patients without interventions. The lifestyle intervention group patients lost more than 6 kilograms in the first year. However, over the course of the next 10 years, they gained most of the lost weight back and had almost the same weight as the controlled patients. Six years after the Biggest Loser show, most contestants regained most of their lost weight. Almost all lifestyle intervention trials showed weight loss in the short term, but weight gain all happened in the long term, just like the DPP trial. Increased appetite and decreased metabolism contribute to weight regain. Obesity experts say diet and exercise alone are no cure for obesity. Here are the non-surgical weight loss programs at UCLA. Comet Nutrition, Prescription Medications, Risk Factor for Obesity, also known as RFO, and Lifestyle Modification. Indications for bariatric surgery include a BMI greater than 40 or a BMI greater than 35 with comorbidities such as hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, and severe arthrosis. Here are the surgical options. One of the surgical options is laparoscopic Ruin Y gastric bypass surgery. Almost all the cases are done laparoscopically now, which means much smaller incisions, significantly reduced pain, and faster recovery. During this procedure, the stomach is divided into two portions. A small pouch with 30 to 45 cc of volume is then connected to the small bowel. The food bypasses the larger part of the stomach. The surgeons do not remove any part of the stomach. The Swedish obesity study showed that gastric bypass patients still lost more than 25% of their total body weight 20 years after surgery. 
In this figure, the lower green line is the weight for gastric bypass patients over 20 years, and the upper purple line is the weight for control patients who did not have surgery. Bariatric surgery leads to significant reduction of comorbidity, such as migraines, pseudotumor, dyslipidemia, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, polycystic ovarian syndrome, venous stasis, gout, depression, obstructive sleep apnea, asthma, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, GERD, stress urinary incontinence, degenerative joint disease. Another surgical option includes the sleeve gastrectomy. Again, almost all the cases are done laparoscopically. During this operation, about 75 to 80% of the stomach is removed. At the end of the procedure, the stomach looks like a banana. Many researchers think that the removed part of the stomach may secrete hunger hormones. This might be part of the reason that most patients feel dramatically reduced hunger feelings after surgery. The advantages of the sleeve gastrectomy versus the bypass include fewer complications overall, minimal nutritional side effects, and because of this, it is now the most performed bariatric procedure in the country. Operating time for the gastric bypass surgery is 2 to 3 hours. Operating time for the sleeve gastrectomy is about 1 hour. Most patients are discharged after 1 to 2 nights of stay in the hospital. Most patients can go back to work after two weeks. Another surgical option is the lap band. Due to very high long-term complication rate, most centers, including UCLA, have stopped performing this procedure. Bariatric surgery is safe. Between 2002 and 2009, the in-house mortality rate decreased by seven-fold. Here is mortality rate for common procedures. Gallbladder surgery, 0.7%, hip replacement, 0.93%, and bariatric surgery, 0.1%. For patients with morbid obesity, not having surgery is more dangerous than having surgery. Over the long term, bariatric surgery has been shown to decrease the chance of dying early by 50 to 89%. The initial risks of dying or complications from surgery decreased significantly in the past decade. Bariatric surgery nowadays is safer than most common general surgery procedures. If you want help with obesity at UCLA, call 310-825-7163 or visit us on our website at comet.ucla.edu. In summary, obesity is a serious medical disease. The benefits of bariatric surgery go beyond weight loss itself. Bariatric surgery is safe. 